as a matter of fact, the universe always existed. And what we believe was the beginning was just a transition from a contracting phase to an expanding phase that we call the bands. The Big Bang's idea can explain certain features of the universe that the Big Bang idea that there was a beginning cannot. Singularity is not a good feature. It is a sign of some sickness. So, Peter, I'm guessing you are familiar with the Big Bang Theory. Well, I think you're talking about the 12-year running uh, Emmy Award winning CBS comedy, The Big Bang Theory, but uh, I'm not. I haven't actually, I never actually watched that show, but I am a huge fan of uh, Young Sheldon, which is, I guess, the story before Sheldon became Sheldon, but I don't know any of the characters uh, Sheldon or, I mean, I obviously know Sheldon, but I don't know anything about the big stuff. So, no, I don't know anything. Jim about Parsons, the guy that plays Sheldon, who actually sort of became the star of that show. Uh, and like you mentioned, 12 years, it was the number one sitcom. I wasn't, I didn't watch it religiously. I did, uh, you know, I'm, a f I'm familiar with the storyline. And obviously they dealt with, with throughout the show, some of the top names in Fizz. Neil deGrasse Tyson made appearances. Bill Nye, of course, famously uh, made appearances on The Big Bang Theory. And we're lucky enough to get some of the luminaries of the world of physics and science join us here on What If Discussed. But yes, it wasn't talking about the show. I was talking about the actual Big Bang. Oh, The Big Bang Theory. Yes, yes of the, course. The you mean Bang the thing theory. that the universe started from a pea-sized singularity 14 billion years ago. Give or take 100 million years. And we're here now expanding from that, uh, from that explosion. Yes, that's what they say. Uh, and again, one of the things that we forget in that title of both the sitcom and what you're talking about is the word theory. We, we often sort of just take it for granted that this is an absolute. Of course, these things are always changing. They're always being revised. Nobody as, was there at the time. Nobody, I, I haven't seen a video. Right. Um, so like science, it's always evolving. It's changing. When we figure new things out, we develop new technologies and this is no different. And of course mm -hmm. now the big bang theory, I'm not saying it's on its way out, but it's certainly being challenged now by theories that are, that answer some of the questions the big bang theory didn't like the big bounce theory and cyclical universe theory. The big bounce theory, meaning that we are bouncing. Not like a bungee cord or a yoga ball or a basketball, um, but yes, I mean, there is some sort of contraction and uh, or expansion and contraction thing going on again. Well, so okay. it's like one of those uh, paddle ball things. Yes. So you, yeah. You know, well, this is the type of explanation you get when you and I try to break it down. <laughs> so I'll give you two options. You could we could either continue this or you could actually hear the explanation from probably the preeminent person on the planet working on the big bounce theory right now. I'm, I'm curious to continue with this and see how you, you are going to explain. Yes. Well, no, uh, this, I, I, she, is a, she is a theoretical physicist. I am a theoretical, theoretical physicist. And I think in the end, probably option A would be the, the, the place where we're going to get more answers. Theoretically. Theoretically. On fire today. Um, so our guest today for what if the universe was bouncing is? Well, it's Dr. Anna Iosh, a theoretical physicist working in gravitation and cosmology at the Max Planck Institute for Gravitational Physics in Germany. Her research is aimed at the most fundamental questions about the universe. What is the mechanism that created our universe? What is the universe composed of? And how will it be changing in the future? Before joining the Max Planck Society, Dr. Iash held the inaugural John A. Wheeler postdoctoral fellowship at the Princeton Center for Theoretical Science and spent the following two years as a research faculty and principal investigator of the Origins of the Universe Initiative at the Columbia Center for Theoretical Physics and Harvard's Institute for Theory and Computation. Dr. Iash, thanks for joining us today on What If Discussed. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks, Richard. So, uh, not a small question, obviously. How did the universe form? Uh, what is the origin of the universe? And one could be forgiven for believing that, oh, we've already figured that out, right? I mean, yeah. religion for years kind of had... So many people think they have. Different origin out. theories on kind of how we arrived here. And then science kind of took over. 
uh, you know, four or 500 years ago, ultimately culminating in the Big Bang Theory being kind of what we've sort of all agreed on is the origins of the universe. But theory is really the key word in the sentence. And there's still a lot of to be determined, especially with your work kind of looking at it differently. So I'll, I'll ask the question this way. Uh, Dr. Iesh, in the beginning, there was what? Um, no beginning. Oh, um, excellent. But, uh -oh. but what, what I believe is that instead of a bang, there actually was a bounce. And this bounce took us from a phase of contraction before to a phase of expansion after. And this expansion is still lasting. So we are currently in expanding phase. And the cool, cool idea is here that all the features of the universe, so the distribution of matter, its geometry that we see today, um, all traced back and all were generated during this phase and the universe contracted down to a small size and bounced back to our current expanding phase. So we tend to always think of things in uh, in a dualism manner. You know, it's an it's an either or for most of the things that we uh, think of, like uh, King Kong versus uh, Godzilla or Batman versus the Superman, penguin? yeah, or Superman. Yeah, sure. so it's one, one or the other. So, but uh, with the Big Bang theory versus the Big Bounce theory, it, it sounds like you can't have one without the other. Am I right? Um, no, I would disagree. <laughs> These are really two distinct ideas. So the one idea, the Big Bang Theory says that space and time really had a beginning. And since this beginning, it's always been expanding and always will be expanding. And the other idea, the, the idea of there being a big bounce preceding our expanding phase says, no, there was no beginning. As a matter of fact, the universe always existed. And what we believe was the beginning was just a transition from a contracting phase to an expanding phase that we call the bands. So not only that these two ideas are competing, they are really incompatible. And the struggle is to figure out which one is the right idea. So was there a beginning or was there no beginning but a bands? And we are in a fortunate situation today that we actually can figure this out, both using our mathematics, using our computers or simulations and using experiment. And as a matter of fact, I would say recent work that uh, I have done together with collaborator has shown that the Big Bang idea can explain certain features of the universe that the Big Bang idea that there was a beginning cannot. Hmm. So it's more about the infinite versus the finite, I, I guess, to some degree, right? Some degree, it's true, yes. Well, that's, I mean, it's hard to get your head around. And it's interesting because you hear, you know, the cyclical universe theory, which sounds, I guess, closer to what you're talking about and maybe is more compatible with bounce because it's, there is no beginning. It's, it's kind of going in and out. I've heard it explained kind of, again, expanding and contraction. We, we've heard about the big crunch theory, which would, I guess you'd have quite the six pack <laughs> as a universe if there was a lot of crunches. But in that regard, if it's expanding and contracting, bouncing, if you will, in a cycle, then, I mean, it, it sounds almost like breathing. Is that, is that a fair at the macro sense? It's almost like inhaling and exhaling. It's not quite like that. You are right that earlier, almost all ideas that involve the cyclic universe, where the universe underwent infinite periods of contraction and expansion connected by a bounce, people really thought that it was more like breathing. But uh, that's not true for the kind of new, new kind of cyclic ideas that I'm exploring together with my group. So in the old idea, what you are quoting is people told that after the bounce, the universe was expanding by a certain amount and then contracted by the same amount. But what we think today is that instead what happens is that the universe expands a lot more than it contracts. And this is quite cool because it turns out that all the problems of the earlier ideas were related to the fact that people thought of the universe as a six pack. But if you make the universe expand a lot more than, than it contracts, then you can solve all the problems with the, with, with the old cyclic models and end up with a universe that keeps growing, growing and growing. And the only reason why, why we don't see in a cyclic universe that that's the case is because we are local observers. And so the observer would think this is just like breathing, but it's not the case. Hmm. Ah. Um, the, the singularity or the primeval atom uh, that they sometimes call it is uh, a big part of the Big Bang Theory. 
the big bounce gets criticized for bypassing the singularity. Um, how can we understand that piece of the puzzle? Well, that's perhaps a misunderstanding because, you know, a singularity is not a good feature. Usually when, when a theory um, that we have in physics has a singularity, then we consider that as a problem. It is a sign of some sickness. It's, sign, it, it's the sign that the theory breaks down when it encounters a singularity. So actually what people have been trying to do, even in the context of the Big Bang Theory, to explain the beginning without a singularity, without this sickness. And I personally, and I would say my colleagues too, consider uh, the absence of a singularity, a real advantage of the Big Bang Theory. You can cure the sickness of there being a singularity by eliminating the bang and replacing it by a bounce. I like the, uh, the sickness idea of it, because I mean, to be honest, it's, it wouldn't be the first time that somebody brought up the, the Big Bang Theory in my life where I was like, so let me get this straight. You're saying that the, all the energy in the universe came from a pea-sized singularity. Sounds about right. And uh, <laughs> kind of what be, and, but the obvious follow-up has always been, well, what, became, what came before yeah. the singularity? And generally speaking, people have been like, well, we, we, we don't know, which That's to your point is the yeah. breakdown in the theory. You're somebody that also has an interest in the philosophy of science. You've studied it, you've written about it. And this feels to me where we get into a little more philosophically, even esoteric, because for the finite human being with our dualistic minds, small dualistic, small minds. dualistic minds, the idea of infinity is just an abstraction. It's so hard to get our heads around, yet it's a key piece of this puzzle. How do we, how do we know this let's call it the unknowable, and how do, we, how do we understand infinity? Okay, that's a tough one. <laughs> because, you know, the question is, if it's important to understand it. In, in, in the history of physics, in particular, during the last hundred years, we have encountered situations when we just couldn't understand or imagine things that turned out to be true. So take, for example, quantum physics. It's really difficult to understand or imagine that a single electron can go through several slits, right, at the same time and behaves like a wave. We really don't understand it. We don't really imagine it. But what turns out is that in, the, in, in physics, we very often encounter situations when we have to live with things. We have to accept things what we previously thought not to be true, not to be imaginable. And I believe it, it, is, it is similar with the universe, you know, if an experiment or if, if, if we invent theories that tell us that the universe might be infinite and we find experiments that show us that that really is the better explanation than assuming a finite universe, then we probably will first have to live with it without truly understanding or, or imagining it just by the way that that's the better explanation uh, being taught us by experiment. So this is a strange situation. Yeah, and it's it's like a lot of you know you hear about some people talking about no time and space, and although I can say okay, I, I can I can understand what you mean, but I can't understand no, no time, time and space. There like is. it just feels like something that's such a an integral part of this existence, but the lack of time is just something so abstract for our human minds, or at least my human mind. I am in space. There is time. Yes, I, I, I yeah. would say as well. But these are obviously uh, some bigger questions, which we will, we will follow up with you uh, after we take a little break here, because there's, there's certainly more to get to. Mm -hmm. um, but we really, I mean, thanks for taking us through this particular in the beginning scenario, or at least one of the scenarios of in the beginning where can people follow your work right now? Yeah. And what do you have coming up? Because it sounds like you're on the cusp of some pretty big game-changing theories. I hope so, <laughs> certainly. Uh, this is pretty simple. So we, we have a website. My group has a website. It is also simple. It's called bouncingcosmology.com, one word. And there you find me, my bio, links to my personal website, um, the people I work with and their descriptions our papers that we put out, and perhaps most interesting for, for, for the viewers uh, is that we have there was a links to videos and videos uh, that some of them are quite accessible for, for people who don't every day and every night work on the Bansing universe. Like, like, like Peter and I. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you, like you too. Small brain people. 
Um, well, if you like this episode, and I don't know why you wouldn't, yeah. maybe you'd like to dig a little bit deeper. And you can, because we're going to go a little bit deeper on our extended audio podcast. Yes, which I, I'm, and, and who knows, by the end of this, we might have, uh, we, we might have figured out uh, how the universe started, and perhaps more importantly, where is the universe going? Maybe we're on the cusp of, of solving. It feels this. like we are, but uh, you know, probably in the next 20 minutes, we'll probably just scratch the surface. Uh, Dr. Ishas, thanks for joining us today on What If Discussed. Thanks very much. Thanks. So, uh, yeah. Wow. I don't know where to start. That's uh, Well, you can't know where to start because, as Dr. Ishas says, there's no beginning and there is no end. Uh, that, that is perfect, which, again, it's really hard to get your head around. Uh, and I, I learned a lot, and I, lo- I, I love how she describes what she's working on, but there's a reason why there's only a few people in the world that are working on these types of things, because they have the minds that can sort of even deal with the infinite. Me, on the other hand, it ends up being kind of more questions than answers. Yeah, well, uh, here's the good thing, is that we have more questions, and we'll get more answers. On the other side. On the other side. If you like this interview and you want to learn more, maybe you want to learn infinitely more, Ooh. maybe you want to contract a little bit and not learn so You're much. You're on fire. Either way, why don't you click on the link below and uh, that'll take you to the extended audio version. Now, if you're already listening to the extended audio version, don't go looking for a link because there is no link. Just keep um, listening. You just keep listening. That's all there is to it. Uh, we'd like to thank Dr. Iash again and please join us again next week on What If Discussed.